Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. We have some of the breaking news coming from Crimea, the Ukrainian part that was annexed by the Russian Federation back in 2014 and as you can see they have many of the air bases on that peninsula and actually it's my home place, I was born in Sevastopol city and today we got some of the explosions on the Russian controlled airport of Nova Fedorovka in Sakhalin city it is a very unique airport used by russian fighter jets and also there's some equipment installed on the runways to simulate landings and takeoffs on russian air carrier well actually russia lost their air carrier a long time ago on the maintenance it was huge fire on that one and they cannot use that air carrier any longer we have also your patoria city which is mostly a tourist place and there is a big and long beach across the shore with many of the tourists who published the photos and videos of the explosion filmed on this airport so let me introduce those to you well you can see the explosion it's quite huge over there and the smoke covers most part of Saki city including the airfield itself you can see just a car or something and the russian authorities said that they're gonna close the five kilometer perimeter around this hot spot and they will evacuate some of the people from this zone and many of the tourists who stayed in Yupatoria and Saki evacuate themselves already from Crimea and now they have huge traffic jams leaving Crimea so this was filmed near to Kerch Bridge and let's speak about the possible causes of that explosions because there were many but at the same airfield well Russia say that it was misjudgment or mishandling the weapons on the airport that caused those significant explosions devastating the airplanes and ammunitions here on a map literally you can see that this airfield is quite far away from the Ukrainian controlled territory and we don't have the rocket available to hit uh, that airfield so far. The only way how we might get closer is using our aviation but Russia also has their anti-aircraft systems that is why i think ukraine wasn't using aviation in this case how ukraine could do it is with attackams rockets that are not now available for the harmers Tochka U is also tactical ballistic rocket but with a much less range required to reach this airfield so as for me two reasons are acceptable first of all we have the attackams rockets already in our army the second one russian airfield suicide and for you just to see those explosions out there unimaginable power lots of fur looks like a hollywood movie filmed in crimea right we're gonna see how situation develops there and saki i used to be there in that city and uh, this lake sasik is very wonderful for fishing so i went there with my grandpa and we usually fished over here in this place not far away from the airfield but russia has many airfields in the area jankoy uh, gwardiske kacha and belbek over here also they have their airfield in melitopol that was also under tag this night and if we go to the fire detection well most of those are the wildfires because we really have the dry weather on the south part of Ukraine. As for the frontline movement, my friends, recently it was no big movement on the area and I can see that more or less situation is standstill uh, and let's go to some of the news and events so watching this video I think that it could be just a fire so we had some of the smoke coming from the place so it could be fire and then ammunition detonated so it could be Russian scenario why not but the explosion was really huge two of the explosions you can see uh, in this area i was able to find a video of the melitopol airfield attack that was conducted by our artillery rocket artillery systems probably harmers just this night and there are some of the explosion similar to crimea case awesome news coming from the united states of america they will give ukraine more of the rockets for the harmers 
rocket artillery systems it's awesome my friends so now the land lease doesn't work it will start to work in october as promised but still we got some of the help from united states occasionally so it's some kind of additional help to those 40 billion dollars that will be granted for ukraine so we got 1 billion dollars and for that we're gonna receive hammers more ammo for hammers uh, 75,155 millimeter artillery shells for m triple sevens some of the rockets to the sam's anti-aircraft systems it means that we have those probably in ukraine already and 1000 of the javelin anti-tank rockets awesome thank you united states for your awesome support remember yesterday i told you about one more rocket attack on antonovsky bridge that is controlled by russian forces well here we have with the outcome russians film more new holes antonovsky bridge is closed for the vehicles and tanks and we constantly bomb them but you can see some of the equipment it's uh, the generator and i was told that they also lost some of the tractors and big crane so there we're trying to repair the bridge you can see those kind of uh, places where they're able to close those holes but also there is the structural material uh, those iron tubes also were damaged and that is why this bridge is useless for heavy armored vehicles as tanks believe me or not but all of the electronics that russia use for their military vehicles are mostly coming from the western countries actually those were sanctioned after 2014 but still somehow got to russia i hope now western countries will stop sending the weaponry to russian federation just recently russia attacked ukraine with kinjal hypersonic rocket they use either mig 31 or tupolev 222m3 to accelerate this rocket initially then they launch it from the airplane and then it uses its own engine to accelerate up to 8000 kilometers now which is quite a lot but it can only fly on a high flight levels then it should descend it decelerates to the normal supersonic speeds but still it is very hard to intercept that rocket it can be only intercepted during the descent stage which is quite short so we don't have the weapons and the world doesn't have the weapons to counterattack those rockets or basically it's better to say just to shut down that i'm sure that you know the name of the most popular drone nowadays it's Bayraktar, and they want to build a factory in ukraine it was agreed even before the war in ukraine started so company announced that no matter on the war but still they want to build that factory in ukraine because some of the equipment that they use for Bayraktar are coming from ukraine as well we have fantastic motor siege engines more powerful compared to rotex that they use currently on their tb2 drones and we're gonna see the new era for the drone development but russia said already that they will destroy that factory if they'll try to build it well we'll see if putin wants to create more enemies to his country well he may shell this factory but you know what the founder of Bayraktar is a relative for president of Turkey Recep Tayyip Erdogan. Lufthansa extended the ban to use Russian airspace till March next year. And you know what? Russia started to ground their commercial airplanes because they need spare parts. Recently, there was no major update about the situation around the nuclear power plant in Energodar, the biggest one in Europe. However, I think that Russia tries to use it as negotiation, a uh, bad to negotiate with Ukraine for some kind of peaceful talks but our leaders say no we'll not negotiate with Russia until they free our territory and it's good yeah for sure we have some of the memes here's for example the train from Crimea back to Russia after the explosion in Saki city <laughs> one more well actually my friends we are out of range to reach uh, that airfield as I say to you we need big attack amps rocket not those uh, six uh, in a block and so those have 70 up to 80 kilometers range not 
300 that required to reach the Saki airfield. Turkey sent to Ukraine those armored vehicles and those uh, the name of those is BMC Kirp. Um, they are already in Ukraine filmed by our guys here. Awesome. I don't know how many of those we have, but it seems like more than 10 and they help a lot. So thank you, Turkey, for your help. And by the way, my friends, thank you all for supporting Ukraine from whatever country you are. You are awesome. Many thanks. Oh, my friends, it is a game changer. We're going to receive those AGM-88 Harm rockets from United States and those are very effective against the anti-aircraft systems those can be fired just from the airplanes but we have many of the airplanes in our air forces and then those rockets sense the signal coming from the anti-aircraft system they fly directly to target that system it means that we can destroy the russian anti-aircraft system all the way till Crimea and in the future in Crimea itself because the range of this rocket is 150 kilometers Russians do not have adequate response for it awesome the best rocket out there if we destroy Russian anti-aircraft systems we may use our own aviation across the front line that will help a lot to our own forces and also could be solution for the carriage bridge Ukraine shut down one more K-52 helicopter what is interesting about this one except that it is one of the best their helicopters we actually shut down their best helicopter pilot Colonel Kleshenka that was responsible for the many parades he was a chief pilot there for that activity and found that in those debris so our journalist uh, Butusov went to the front lines to film uh, about the remains so this is the guy Kleshenka who was shot down and he was a pilot not only on K-52 but on many of the Russian helicopters and he was like their first class the best pilot that they had so they went to the area and collected some of the debris they also found uh, some sort of the human remains and um, portable man pad doesn't care about whether it's best pilot or not it just shuts down the helicopter so there's the gun so the similar remains as you may found on one of my channels when i went to gestomal airport myself and i filmed the remains of the k-52 basically nothing left from the helicopter however they found some of the debris on that place the helicopter remains and together with some of the private belongings like part of the metal as you can see here and also i don't know why it wasn't melted uh, the neck chain of that guy my friends it is 100 that russia didn't expect those severe losses here in ukraine and they will suffer more and they really are now begging for the peaceful talks with ukraine because they want to freeze this conflict for now but then in a few years they're gonna start it once again for ukraine it's better to fight for our land continuously to throw to drive them out from our country my friends many thanks for your support for helping me with that i'll keep you updated on situation here in ukraine if you like what i do please press the like if you want to support my channel there are some of the links below to support me here for those of you who support me my friends you're awesome thank you so much for it and as usual i wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are have a great time